very well. How are you? I, I'm very well. I'm, I'm thrilled to have you on the show, and they are thrilled to be looking at you. Thank you. This must be everywhere you go. People must, because they've, they've watched you grow up and people kn feel like they know you, right? I know, it's weird. Actually, just seeing that clip then was quite strange because yeah. my voice was still, you know. Yes, you were 11. Yes, I yes. know. <laughs> but it was, it, 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 I prefer it now. Uh -huh. Definitely. <laughs> and they had to, did they count on just you going, you being the guy, or did they think they were going to recast every movie? Um, I think that, you know, at the beginning they were, they were always saying, you know, everyone was taking it one film at a time in, in case I suddenly had some, you know, massive growth spurt, which, as you can all tell, didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, um, and, but, uh, you know, it's just worked out this way that we, yeah. we have none of us... And they were saying stuff earlier on, like, will you get too old to play the part? And Harry grows up in each film, so that was... Uh, we didn't ever think that would be too much of an issue. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing that you didn't have a huge growth spurt because it's yes. made you very, very successful. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You should well, be very grateful yes, for exactly very, who you are. Absolutely. I'm very grateful for my mother being five foot tall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're very... Uh, so uh, you got to have a little tiny bit of coin of this. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, this is uh, the fifth film, uh, has made worldwide uh, basically a billion dollars. $911 million. Really? A billion. <laughs> All five, all five together have uh, totaled 4.5 billion. Well, which one didn't do so well? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Something's wrong. Um, and wow. I mean, all of this. So this is this has been very, very good for you. This entire thing. No, absolutely. I mean, that. I mean, the, but the advantage of that is that you know you you don't have to. I mean, I think if I was somebody who was totally motivated by money, then uh, I just probably stop working. But right. I'm not, you know, I want to I want to keep working. That's, you know, the advantage of, of being in this fortunate position that Harry Potter's given me is that I can I can go off and, you know, do a film like December Boys and, you know, not have to worry about m money or anything like that. Yeah. You know. Well, that's great. And you want to nice, you want to yeah. do so you want to stay hungry and you're, you're yeah, young exactly. and you want to yeah. keep being driven and by something by totally. hopefully you're passionate about your your art. So now how is this? You're you're 18 mm -hmm. and uh, you're uh, crazy rich. And uh, <laughs> you're adorable, and you're single. How is that possible that you're single? Um, I, well, I mean, it's... <laughs> Just be honest, what's wrong with you? I know, it's... <laughs> it's I, I don't know, it's weird. I think, I think when people see um, actors on screen, they, they automatically think that they're, they're going to be uh, really cool in real life just because they're an actor and, and, and stuff like that. And, we, you know, the, the majority of us are not. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that maybe comes a great disappointment to many people. Uh, no, you, you seem like... And what, what's really don't great about... Don't awe me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't need an awe. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're awing because you're humble. And I think that <laughs> that's very refreshing to see somebody who is as successful as you are. All right. And you're humbled by the fact that you don't think you're all that just because your films are popular. I think that makes you more attractive. <laughs> Because you have managed to somehow stay out of jail and stay out of all kinds of trouble and with the success you have, so uh, you got your head on, and I'm sure your parents are fantastic people because yeah. they raised you right, so... Yeah. No, well, hopefully, you know, jail's not in the immediate future. Yeah. All, all the long-term future, yeah, in fact. Yeah, And it yeah. all, yeah. Although it gets you a lot of attention. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. If it, if it was... um, so tell us about December Boys. This is a total departure. To yeah. a small film that you shot in Australia. It's it's a film about four boys who've grown up in a in a Catholic orphanage in the Australian outback, and it's they uh, the orphanage is given a generous donation of money by an anonymous donor, and they choose to use that money by sending the boys on holiday. These four particular boys on holiday for four weeks over Christmas, and that that's it. It's a really simple story, and it's about all the various experiences that that that, that they encounter while they're out there. And my character who's slightly older than the other boys, is, is sort of very much um, uh, a sort of tragic love story. Sort of tragic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but... But know. also good, yes, and also good fulfilling. And yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and that, that opening scene is so sad that when the boys are just hoping someone picks oh, them, yeah. it's just, it's heartbreaking, it's heartbreaking, and that you've kind of given up, like, they're not mm. going to pick me up. My character is, as I said, slightly older, and... You know, he, he's about 16, 17, and so the next, you know, on his next birthday, he'll be leaving the orphanage. So, you know, no one, in, in, from his point of view, no one wants to adopt a 17 year old. So, you know, they want to adopt a kid they can, they can raise from a young age. Yeah. And so he's, he's sort of, he's a bit hopeless in that 
Um, yeah, yeah. And, and it is hard in the system. There are a lot of, it's harder to, the older you get to, to be adopted. And I think if I ever do adopt, it's going to be 17 year old because they can do more around the house. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Get rid of those babies, you know? Uh, all right. We have to take a break. And when we come back, I'm going to let the audience ask uh, Daniel some questions. We'll be right back. <laughs> back with Daniel Radcliffe. And that was a scene from your new film, December Boys. All right, so we have some people in the audience that want to ask some questions. Come with me in the audience, okay. all right? I think they'll like that. Jason, who's Jason? You're Jason? Hi, Jason. Hey. It's Daniel. Look Hi, at Jason. Daniel. Nice to meet you. All right, and so Jason has a question uh, for you. What yeah. is? Yeah. Um, I had read somewhere that in between. He's, your... he's ready. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Your, uh, There's no, no time limit on the answer. It's okay. <laughs> okay fine. All right. In between uh, filming your Harry Potter flicks and your other ones, you did some theater and you had to actually act uh, nude on stage. Yeah. How was that like? That was fine. Yeah. You know, it was one of those things that everyone sort of everyone thinks it's going to be uh, really tough. Uh, yeah. No. It's just, yeah. <laughs> um, no. Everyone thinks it's going to be sort of. Um, a lot tougher than it is, really. I mean, after the first two... Uh... Have you seen... <laughs> look at this picture, your body. Look at that body. <laughs> you should be naked all the time. Yeah, I know. You should, <laughs> as, as often as possible, the next Harry Potter, naked, naked, well, naked. So, <laughs> Joe Rowling came and saw the show, and that was exactly yeah. what she said after. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> no, I mean, I talked to Gary Oldman, who's been naked on stage a couple, of, a few times, I think, and, um, and he, I said, you know, what's it like? And he, he said, after the second time, you just won't care anymore. Uh, which is exactly what happens. That's amazing. Yeah. Maybe I'll start being naked. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you, Jason. Uh, Dana, you where's Dana? No, Dana? Are you the next name? Okay. Hi, how are you doing? Look, somebody's standing up, and I'm just going to go with her. Uh, hi, Dana. Look who it is. It's Daniel. Hello. I'm going to stand on this step. Yeah. And then yeah, where I'm I have eye contact. That's great. I'm really tall. Yeah. That's great. You want to stand on the chair? <laughs> no, thank you. Can, right. I could jump on your... Right. No. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, okay. no, 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 right. Ellen. All right. Um. All right. Uh, I was just wondering if you had any hidden talents. I can do something <laughs> truly disgusting with my tongue. Oh, oh I can too. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I totally want to see it. Well, actually, I can do two things. One, one is this, which I don't know how many of you will be able to see this, but actually, I'm on that screen there this, uh, just to really showcase this hideousness. OK. Um, And then also, um, just count to three quite slowly. One, two, three. <laughs> I can do that too! Do I can do that too! <laughs> I can do it all. Wow. High five. Yeah. Come on! <laughs> so amazing! <laughs> That's great. All right, well, you won't be single much longer after that. <laughs> Everybody saw that. <laughs> Katie, Katie Clark. Uh, yes. Hi, Katie. Hi. Stand up and uh, ask Daniel a question. You're ask so him funny. to show some more talents. <laughs> <laughs> you have a beautiful accent. Oh, thank you. Can you and will you do an American accent for us? Can what you? What do you want me to say? Anything you would like. No, you've got to give me something to say because I always yeah. say something. Uh, I'm having so much fun. Right there. Say that. Um, okay, I'll try. Um, December Boys opens in select theaters this Friday. We'll be right back with Harvey wow. Levin after this. Don't go away. <laughs> So nice to meet you. <laughs> you too. I can't believe we haven't met before. I can't either because I'm actually a huge fan of yours, oh, well, and um, to get to see the show is amazing. Thank you. Well, I'm a huge fan of yours as well. And uh, so let's uh, talk about what that's like to to have a, a series that goes as long as it did. I mean, it's, it's basically your whole life, right? I it mean, it's more than half my life. Yeah. I started when I was nine, and I finished when I was 22. So, um, so every year you did a movie. Every year I did a movie. Every year I would do another Harry Potter movie, and that was my life from, from very, very young. So when it, when it ended, I was like, I had known every year what my schedule would look right. like, and, then, and now I wake up and I'm like, why isn't someone telling me where I need to be, and like, <laughs> what I need to eat, and when I can go to the bathroom, and you know, like, it's crazy. So it's been, it's been a bit of a shock. I was gonna ask that. Um, I mean, it must feel a little bit, I mean, is, it, is there, are you happy that there was a completion to it, or do you miss it? Do you miss the character? Um, I mean, I, I really, I miss it. I, I miss the people, mm -hmm. really, that were there with it's me every family. day. They were yeah. my family. Um, 
But um, but I'm also really excited because I've got to do so much these last two years. I've mm -hmm. been filming in Iceland, in Pittsburgh, in New Orleans. Um, wow. I've been working in Paris. Like I've done. It's been amazing. I've I've done so much. So it's incredible. It's exciting too. Because you really you had done like a play before you got this role, right? I did. Yeah, I did like two school plays. Two school maybe. plays. You get this. It turns out to be the most successful franchise, and then you have this huge career. That's it's crazy because I. I mean, I didn't really even know what it was like to audition for, it, for a movie until um, until recently, because I just, the first thing I auditioned for, I got, right. and then I worked for 10 years. Right. <laughs> and, um, and now, you know, and so um, it's really weird, because I think people assume that I'm very experienced, but I'm actually, I mean, terrified going into auditions, and like very, I don't know that much about this industry, really. I don't know that much about... Hollywood, it's, well, it's kind of weird. You've done very well for not knowing much about it. And, <laughs> but, but I understand how that would be scary to step yeah. out of it and, and actually audition and yes. be a different character yes. and a different thing, which is really, really yeah. great. And you're doing very well. Thank but you. are people recognizing you everywhere you go? Uh, it, it depends where I am. I think in America, people don't really expect to see me so much. So I, <laughs> I was out. Uh, the night before last, and this girl was like, has anyone ever told you that you look, I mean, exactly like the girl from Harry Potter? <laughs> and I, and I, I like went in to like try and stop her and be like, oh, well, actually, uh, I, it is me. And she just, this girl just kept going. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't stop her. She was like, you know, it's so weird. And like, and oh, it was so embarrassing. And then it just got to a point where I was like, I don't think I can tell her anymore. I think I just... <laughs> I have to just try and find an exit route as quickly as possible because she's gonna, it's gonna where be so were you? embarrassing. Can I ask where you were? I was at the Greenwich Village Hotel in uh -huh. New York. So she just was in a lobby and just started so talking I to you? I met her through a friend oh. and I just turned around and said, hi, I'm Emma, and she said, hi, I'm Holly. And, and you have the same name, it's freaky. <laughs> You I know. look like her, and what's your last name? And you have the same last name, too. No, and, and also I told her that I was making film, well, she's like, what are you doing in New York? I was like, oh, well, I'm filming a film. And she still didn't click. <laughs> she doesn't but... sound too bright. Okay, so. <laughs> So how did it end with you telling her it's you? No, I told I told you I found an exit. I you was just, like, I really need the bathroom. I'm sorry, I have to go. And then I just didn't come back because <laughs> that's a good call. Yeah, that was that, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, and I think it's because people expect me to live in a castle in Scotland, right? And and like to see me in a New York setting without a wand and a cloak and stuff, right. people can't really. Right. Put it together. You should have come back from the bathroom with a wand and a cloak. <laughs> like, then she would now. have known. And yeah. then she would have been, oh, she has a wand and a cloak too. <laughs> so good. <dear. laughs> you could not help this girl. <laughs> so so here's what I find interesting also. So you because of how brave this is. So you do this, you're a huge star, everyone knows you. You end up coming to America to go to college on your own. You hadn't been here. Yeah. And you go to Brown, right? Yes. And I mean, all these people your age in college grew up watching you in these films, and yes. you're suddenly in college with, with everybody. How was that? Um, it's really funny. Looking back, I realized that I couldn't have made life harder for myself if mm -hmm. I had tried. Like, it was, first of all, people were like, you're going to go to college? That's what you're going to do? I'm like, yeah. I'm, so that was win itself. And then I decided to, to move countries as well. And then, and to be, you know, I had, I, I just was immersed in this culture that I knew nothing about. I don't, I don't know anything about American history or presidents. I don't know what tailgating is. <laughs> I, I've never been to an olive garden. Yeah. I move into this room with this girl I've never met. It was terrifying, but it was so it was so liberating as yeah. well. And I got to go somewhere new and be someone different. Well, I just admire you that because a lot of people would go, I have a successful career, I'm just gonna stay in this business and I don't need to go to college and I but I think that's really admirable that you did that. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah, really cool. All right, we have to take a break and um, come back and talk more with Emma. We'll be right back. We're back with Emma Watson. Did you all see the movie today? Yeah? Yeah. It's so good. That's awesome. So you push yourself in so many different ways, which is really important. Yeah. And, and to be 
like I said, you come from a place, you're very uh, fortunate that you have the career that you have, yeah. and you could stay in that comfort zone, but instead you push yourself outside the comfort zone and do things that a lot of actresses wouldn't. So you're Thank really you. amazing. You're oh, really something so nice. else. Um, I, and now, <laughs> I want to find out. I understand, so you're dating, I, I, I assume you're dating, I don't know if you're in a relationship, but there's got to be a difference between uh, English guys and American guys, right? Um, yeah, there's, there's definitely one or two differences that I've, I've noticed. Um, English guys are like very well put together and they dress really well and they're like very well managed. <laughs> Um, but they're, but they're also very restrained. Like usually, you know, in the in the whole courting situation, I'm used to being like first of all ignored for like the first two months of the ritual, and then and then maybe they'll acknowledge my presence, and then they'll probably be a little mean to me, and then maybe well, you know, whatever. And then I arrive in America, and I remember like a few nights into Brown, this guy just being like. I like you, you're great, let's go out on a date, let's do it. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what just happened? Yeah. Um, this is like, you know, a huge culture shock for me is that, you know, they're very like open and very straightforward, but they wear flip flops, I don't know if I like that. Uh, yeah, it's so about, it's, yeah, yeah you, it's gotta, a, you gotta figure it out. All right, well, uh, I, I, I really think you're just uh, fantastic. So come back anytime you want. You're, fan oh, you're really, amazing. really just something else. I'll be here all the time. I, when I'm having a bad day, um, my friend Sophie will send me the David Beckham skit that you did with uh -huh. the no thumbs, uh -huh. and it just makes my day better. So. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah. It's, your... it's one of my favorite things also that we've ever done is David Beckham. We, we did the thing, well, it's on the website. We, we put you, uh, the thing in David Beckham's ear and I told to him what to out. say. You have and to check it out. It's, it was funny. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm not bad, how are you? I'm great, you're here on a good day, huh? Yeah, man, absolutely, that was cool. Yeah, did you? I, did yeah, you... well, I've, I've actually met uh, Mrs. Obama once before. She, um, they, uh, it, well, I believe it was Sasha's birthday and they, they organized a trip to the Potter set um, and I, they, we had the, the big happy birthday banner in the Great Hall, and then I came out and presented her with her cake, and we, we, yeah. we were just totally starstruck. Yeah, I was gonna say, she's amazing. I just adore her. I yeah. like her so, every time I see her, it, it reminds me how much I like her. Congratulations on Entertainer of the Year of 2011. Thank That's a... Uh, you can't get bigger than that. No, that, no. Was, that, was, that was pretty amazing. Like, it was... It really, it, I mean, it, it really was a, a fantastic year. I mean, for everyone, the, the last year was kind of about the films finishing and, and you know, a, a lot of kind of sadness around that. And But for me, it was a year of celebration. And, and my first year away, I was doing this amazing show. And, like, yeah, it was it was a really great year. I had a, a blast. And you love doing Broadway? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I apologize, by the way, for not dancing when I come out. But I, I'm choreographed. I'm terrible. I, like, <laughs> I, like, like, I don't believe that. You cannot yeah. be a good dancer choreographed and not have rhythm or timing. Oh, you can. Oh. oh, you can. Really? I am, I am, I am, if not the rule, I am the exception that proves the rule. Uh -huh. Like, it's, it's, yeah, my, my, my dancing skills in a, in a club or any kind of situation really? like that are nil. That's yeah. amazing. I did not see the show, but it just, all the write-ups said that your dancing was impeccable and your singing, that you're an amazing singer and dancer. Well, thank, thank, thank them. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I, I love singing. I've always kind of sung around the house. I grew mm -hmm. up listening to a lot of music. Um, so that's always been a part of my life. Dancing has never been. My parents, actually, I am. I am, I am an example of a child who actually loves it when his parents dance. My parents are both incredible dancers. Really? And yeah, yeah. yeah. And now, is your girlfriend a good dancer? Uh, well, she's better than me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's and, and we the, yeah, there was some dancing involved on the on the, on the kind of the night we first got together. Um, she it was the rap party, um, mm -hmm. which was sort of where we had our, our first kiss. So, because you yeah. met her, she was a production assistant, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, she's so, a production assistant on the. So had she film. been on all the films? Um, no, because that would mean she would have been eleven. Well, so <laughs> my job started. Um, but uh, we yeah, we start we start young. On the crew as uh, well. <laughs> um, well but, um, I wouldn't say that she would start at one. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, no, but she, uh, she, um, you know, uh, yes. So she, she started on the sixth movie, and we were both seeing other people at the time. Um, and it wasn't until sort of after the end of the seventh that I kind of had the guts to. Or it was towards the end of the seventh I picked up, the, plucked up the courage to ask her out. Yeah, but did yeah. you have a feeling she felt the same way? You must have. Um, I wasn't. I really wasn't sure because you know she's working all the time. I'm just mm. a lazy actor, like wandering around checking out with the production assistant. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm not sure if she... I, I didn't know if she felt the same way at all, but, you know, mm -hmm. you get to a point where you've just got to chance your arm and see if it 
comes and off. And it worked out. Yeah, yeah. We're still, it worked we're, out. Here we are a year and a half later. Well, so congratulations. Thank you very much. And because the last time you were here, you said it's really hard to, to meet people because you're always working. So you got to meet somebody working. Well, I was working. Yeah, yes. exactly. That's, that's I think that was probably what yeah. was Forget what was going, going on The Bachelor, become a production assistant, and you start dating. <laughs> that's how you do it. That's how you meet people. Um, so let's talk about the Super Bowl. Are you excited about who's in the Super Bowl? I'm really excited. You're a Giants about fan, I right? I'm a Giants fan. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I, got, I got, you know, I was christened a Giants fan when I arrived in New York when I did uh, Equus there the right. first time. And I have, but it was this year that I really got into it. And I understand it's similar for you. You got it, like really got into it recently. I got into it when the Saints were in the Super Bowl because I'm from New Orleans oh, and okay, that's cool. what got me into football. Okay, cool, yeah. awesome. Because I, I'm, I'm actually a huge Drew Brees fan as well. I like yeah, I amazing. like anybody who is under average height for their field and excels. Uh -huh. I, you know, that's that's kind of I find a lot of inspiration. That's in how that. you find people you go for, yeah. 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 Um, but um, <laughs> but yeah, but I'm no, I'm super. I'm very very excited about the Super Bowl. And in fact. I had a proposition for you. All right. Um, which is that you, we obviously both support the Trevor Project. Yes, we and, do. And I was wondering if you would like to place a bet on behalf of the Trevor Project. Okay. For, uh, you can name the sum. I don't. I don't. I don't mind. But 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 like for who? Oh, I'm obviously back in the Giants. I'm not going to. You're back bet in the Giants, them. so that means I have to back the Patriots it if does. we're going to have a bet. <laughs> it's it's a tough one, right? Who said Patriots? <laughs> Wow, yeah, you see, you're like, you 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 like, that's done. $5,000. $5,000. And if the Patriots win, I give $5,000. No, if the no, Patriots you, win, I give the money. I if never the Giants know how to win, All right, if I, yeah, if I lose, you have to give $5,000 to the Trevor Project. Yeah. And if the Giants win, I give $5,000 to the Trevor Project. Perfect. All right, there either way, they're going to get $5,000. Absolutely, so the yeah. Project. <laughs> All right. um, we'll take a break. And, uh, we're going to talk about this movie, and uh, I'm 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 a tough one because it doesn't it takes a lot to scare me. Uh, this is a spooky, spooky movie. Oh, good. I think it's very creepy. A excellent. I hope yeah, so. it is without being gory or anything. No, no, it's yeah. nothing like that. All right, we'll talk about the movie after this. It makes sense in the context yes. of the film. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they were going to show the scene where the uh, the little face when you're looking out the window oh, and that. Uh, yeah. There's so many moments. Let's before we talk about the movie, let's remind everybody. This is when we first got to know you. Let's show a picture of when we first got to know you. Thanks. What a, what a, Thanks for that. Look at that owl. Yeah, that, I know. That, that must have been fun. The owl's the best part of the photo. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, there was. I remember it being heavy. I'm really, I'm, really, really, I, I think, in fact, I think in that scene under my cloak, I have a kind of my arm got so tight they made a brace, which like kept my arm there while the owls. So I, just I didn't bet have to do you're a little kid. That's a heavy thing, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think that was what happened. Amazing. There. So, All right, yeah. so now oh, you've gone more. through so many different. <laughs> it's going to be a photo album. We're going to play music <laughs> behind it, and it's going to go through your whole life. Look Fantastic. at that. So this movie, uh, and like I said, I, I like scary movies, but they have to be really clever and they have to really surprise me. Right. And I think uh, it, it is a very, very creepy, scary movie. It is, absolutely. I mean, as you said, it's, there's no gore. It's not about that. It's about suspense and anticipation and real tension. Now, are you the kind of guy who gets scared easily? Like, if, are you, do you like scary movies normally? Um, I, I I do. I mean, I like, again, I'm, I think I'm kind of the same as you. I don't like gore. I can't deal with any of that. Yeah. I just find that upsetting. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, the 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 others was actually a film we looked at because we thought it had a similar tone to this movie, which I like. So the something Shining startling kind of like my... that would be kind of like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> thankfully. Nothing. Thankfully. Nothing. Thankfully. What? Uh, thankfully, just before that happened, a shadow came over your face. Oh. Uh, I just saw that, and I was like, okay, something's happening. Oh, no! <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you. I love that. Who is that? Um, this is this new English designer called Osman. I like it. I felt it was a little kind of sandy from Greece. Mm -hmm. a little. I almost wore the same thing today. This would have been embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Do you know Jason Bateman? Have you met him before? No. We've never met before. She has no idea who I am either. No, that's not true. <laughs> so it's okay. I'm Michael Strathan. <laughs> Did she get it? Yeah. We you all get it. We all get it. We yeah. all got it? Yeah, we got it. We get it? Um, no. Yeah. So, uh, some people are like, no, I don't. Um, <laughs> so you presented at the Oscars. Uh, I, I, I saw you walk out, but I did not get to see you at uh, the show or the parties. Did you have fun? Were you, were you nervous? Was it your first time? First time at the Oscars. It was very exciting. Um, I thought the show was amazing. Um, I was doing fine, actually. I wasn't that nervous at all. And then 
Joseph was holding my arm before we were going to go out. And I was like, you know what? I just feel so grateful to be here. And this is amazing. And I actually feel really calm. He was like, yeah, this is fine. I mean, this is a great experience. And it's only like a billion people are going to be watching us in like two minutes. And I was like, <gasps> oh my god. I feel so, I was fine. And now I feel so unfine. So thanks, Joseph, for that. You didn't look nervous. Thank you. You didn't. Yeah. And did you go to parties afterwards? Yeah, um, that's true. <laughs> um, well, I had planned, you know, because the Vanity Fair party is very exciting and everyone goes and blah. And, um, but yeah, I got back <laughs> to my hotel room to change, took the dress off, like got into someone's coat and ended up just falling asleep in the coat. And someone woke me up and was like, do you want to get changed to go to the party now? I was like, oh, I just kind of just want to stay here. So I just ate pizza and... Fell asleep and it was actually, it was actually perfect. With this lucky guy that lost his coat. With this lucky guy that lost his coat, exactly. It like you tripped um, into a better night. Yeah, yeah, well, no, I'm just, I was on English time, so a little bit jet lagged and thanks for the coat, I guess. Yeah. I so you're, I mean, your life is amazing because you've been in these huge movies, you're the, this new movie now, and you just graduated or are about to graduate from Brown. I'm about to graduate in May. So you went back to college and... <laughs> You, How you, is that normal? Did I, you go back to college? I, you were no, a child I'm, actor. Did you? I did my time in high school. <laughs> I could not understand the concept of additional voluntary school. I mean, at the time, it just didn't compute to me. But now, uh, with hindsight, I, I wish I had continued at a place as cool as Brown. I mean, how was that? Was it, was it, did you stop acting altogether? No. You kind of split your time. So, um, so in America, you guys graduate in four years, and I'll graduate in five. So I ended up taking two full semesters off, and then I worked during all of my, all of my breaks. And do, do, you, do you get teased there? Cause, like, I got teased in school a lot. Now, this was this was junior high. People were, <laughs> you know, that was that was. Because you were on the, TV. Right. Those are the teasing years. But at Brown, probably people respected the fact that there you are studying for an, an occupation at a college, but you already have one. Did they respect the the work that you had done and? Yeah, I feel like, I don't know, I guess everyone in their freshman year is kind of nervous and is kind of figuring out, I don't know, figuring it all out. Right. And I think people kind of took pity on me. They were just, she's <laughs> English, she doesn't really know where she's going. <laughs> Poor she thing, she was of... in all the Harry Potter right. movies. And... <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, they just kind of, they were, brown kids were actually weirdly protective of me. Like in situations around Providence, they kind of, I don't know, they like saw it as their role to, help me have that experience somehow. I don't know, they kind of got yeah. it. I don't know how to explain it. It's it a was, higher class of people at, at Brown than my <laughs> junior high. Yeah. My junior high was not, not attracting a bunch of world beaters. <laughs> and your parents, your parents must be really proud of you? Um, they are, except they can't really wrap their heads around. Because in England, we graduate after three years. And my dad's like, when is this happening? When is that, you know, when is graduation? Because you've been doing this now for ages. Like, you know, <laughs> when is that happening? So I'm like, well, it's actually only a year longer than what we do in America, but he still is very impatient. They oh, told yeah. me, they told me in the, in the staff meeting, you know, as, as a co-host, I get a staff meeting before, before the show. They told me that uh, you, you, you keep everything in journals and diaries, and that's, a, that's very, very smart of you. How so many you journals and diaries all. do you have going? I think I have 30. What do you wow. mean, like one for each activity you do all day long? <laughs> How do you have 30 journals? Are the other 29 well, filled? I just, I'm one of these people, I just keep everything. If people write me notes, I keep them. If uh, photographs, doodles that people did on napkins and restaurants, just create, I'm a bit crazy like that. But I just love, I don't know. You're gonna write a great book one day. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but you keep a journal of everything that you've been doing since you started this? Did you do it before you started acting? No, I mean, I guess not really. I mean, I was nine, so I, you know. That's when you start writing. That's when you really start <laughs> writing properly, <laughs> I guess. But I just, I remember when I got the part, my, I think it was my grandparents who said you should really write down what it was like to audition and what it was like when you found out that you got the part and so that you don't forget. And you do this I just kind of night? kept it up. Do it at night or mm -hmm. in the morning? I do it at night before bed. Good for you. I mean, that's, that's going to be amazing. I wish I would have written down. I'd, I'd have memories. I don't. I really don't <laughs> have any memories. It's a brilliant thing to have. Yeah. Well, it's. It, yeah. <laughs>
I was going to do another joke that would probably get cut, but so uh, yeah. I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> we don't have time for your humor. You're right. Yeah. No. You will write about yeah. today, yes? Tonight? Uh, yeah, probably. Oh, yeah, she didn't definitely. seem like she was no, ready. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't seem like this is so far not just, interesting she enough. She focuses on the All highlights right. of each week. All right. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. And you really are the busiest actor that I know. You, you, <laughs> you'd think you'd want to rest after being so busy with all the Harry Potter movies, but no. No, no. I mean, I, I mean, I'm in the fantastic position of really loving what I do, as I'm sure you know you do. And yes. it's, it's. I just, uh, yeah. I mean, people often say to me like, why, you know, why aren't you just sort of on a beach somewhere? And you know, like, I think that there's an assumption that you know we would all want to just chill out. But I don't know. I've, I've never done anything else but be on a film set. So I. I exactly. Love it. Like, I mean, so I, I understand that, but like, what's the longest period that you've taken to, to relax? Probably like, uh, you know, in the last few years, the longest time off like would have been it was two weeks maybe. Really? I mean, not much more than that. Yeah. Two weeks. Yeah. And then yeah. you go because you've done I think you've done like three films since then, right? Well, I've done uh, th three films. I filmed three films last year. Um, and a TV show, um, and uh, and yeah, and this year I did a play as as well, and um, and filmed a, the second series of that TV show at the same time as doing the play. Um, How uh, do you do yeah. that? How I do mean, you have that? I mean, at, first of yeah. all, yes, we, you're very lucky that you have those choices and and can work. But it seems like, do you feel like you have something to prove because you did Harry Potter for so long that you need to show people the other sides of you? I don't know if it's. I mean, I do feel I have something to prove, but it doesn't so much uh, display itself in that way. I think it's just a case of like having spent you know 10 years playing one character and towards the end of that time you know you get to look at people like James McAvoy or Ben Whishaw or people who are like great actors who I admire who are playing a load of different parts and you sort of uh, envy them a bit so you want to I think it, there's a desire builds up to just try and do as much as you can yeah well you're doing yeah. it you're accomplishing Thanks. that Cheers. <laughs> and do you feel like they have because there are a lot of people obviously uh, you were perceived in one way for so long and, and then there's rumors about you. Do you ha do you pay attention to crazy rumors that people spread? Um, I mean, I only pay attention to like the very funny ones, of which they are mostly because they're just so. I don't. There's something in the British media as well that does want to. Um, so occasionally, like the rumors in the British media, just make me out to be incredibly egotistical and conceited. Like, like what? One, like of them, one of them had me uh, said that I had built a statue of myself <laughs> to, that I was just going to have in my house. I think they also said it was a naked statue of myself. Yeah. Like, well, now I, think... I would believe that actually because <laughs> well... <laughs> I have seen most of your work, and I, I know. <laughs> We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. There's a thing. There's another. There's a thing going on. <laughs> we're we're going to talk about that. But there's also a rumor that uh, that you have a huge crush on Katy Perry, which I think is true. Well, I mean, it is. It is true. I mean, it's not quite as like. Debilitated. Basically, I, I, a, a guy called um, a, a Josh Horowitz, who works at MTV a lot, interviews me a lot, and I really like making him laugh. And so I always am saying that, and he's always asked me about Katy Perry because the fact that I have a crush on her just really uh, tickles him for some reason. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, and I think uh, the, the last time I, I talked about it, I talked about the fact that I had basically been in a room, and I thought at this point, I was like, I should go up and say hi after all the, you know, stuff I've kind of joked about her in interviews and that. And then I thought, no, what if she's seen those interviews? What if she just thinks you're you are just some like teenage fanboy and just like <laughs> I just so I so I just I I couldn't I I was just like I'm not gonna try it, it would be embarrassing. so you were in the same room with her but you didn't want to walk up and say hi yeah because then I would because then I just get mm. all that sort of stuff in my head and I'm like ah oh, she probably knows I'm like I have a crush on her she's probably heard that stupid story so like no I didn't say hi yeah. so well, I'm sorry she's not here is she no she's not <laughs> <laughs> um, she's yeah she's in the next act she's bringing out a <laughs> naked statue of you oh and god fantastic surprise. Uh, so many of my fantasies. But you do take off your... Yeah, <laughs> two fantasies yeah. at once, yeah. But you do take your clothes off a lot in, in a, lot of, a lot of things. And are, are you just... A lot just, of jobs. Not just a lot of things, like well, stores, like, <laughs> just places I go. No? <laughs> that was my next question. But, so, but you obviously, I know it's films and I know it's the character and it makes sense, but do you, you're obviously comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with it, but I do like to point out that I don't like request it. Like, I don't like, I because somebody did say, because I was having a conversation with another friend of mine who's an actress who also has done quite a few nude scenes. And we were just saying like, we are gonna st start getting called exhibitionists. Yeah. And it has definitely, you know. Is it Kate is, Winslet? 
Well, you know, it wasn't Kate Winslet no, that I was right. talking to you about that. <laughs> um, no. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it just so happens that in all the three movies I did last year, I get naked. Yeah. Um, I promise it's not intentional, but... Uh, You're but not, like, does, s- like going, going through... through where, 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 am I, where am I naked in here? <laughs> this is I that, won't do it! I'll do, yeah. Rewrite this! All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. Wow, such a nice welcome. Yes, it is. They're lovely people, <laughs> all of them. So uh, it has been cause several years since you've been here. Yes. It's, it's been quite a while. You know, it's been so sad. Yeah, well, I'm happy that you're here. Me too. And you're flying all over the world to promote this movie. Where, where did you just come from? I just flew in from China, from Shanghai. When did you get here? So it's very hard to explain, but for some reason, you gain time. So I left in the afternoon and I arrived like earlier in the day. It's very, very strange. You, it's like, it's essentially a time machine. You it know? is. Yeah, it's, uh, it's bizarre. If you flew back and forth, you would never age. <laughs> yes, this is an amazing theory. You just theory. go back and forth just, constantly. Yeah. Try it, I don't know if we can, that's, it may not work, but try it. <laughs> and you did something that I got to do a couple of years ago, you went on safari. I did. Was that your I first? I did, yeah, my yeah, first. Mine too. And did the lions just walk right next, oh yeah, you're close to the- They're the, in the middle of eating a warthog. Yeah. Pumba, you did, did you Pumba s- got it. You saw it after the kill, or did you see the kill? I didn't see, I heard the kill, uh-huh. and then we drove over and, just, it was, yeah, it yeah, was they're serious. the noises that they make. Is... Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, we, yeah, I didn't want to see a kill, but we got there after a kill. Oh, really? And because we had seen them, they literally walk right along next to your truck. Yeah. And did you have to do comfort stops? Yes. So I, that was my biggest question, like, because you're out in the middle <laughs> of, of the bush, and you can't, you can't there's no uh, porta potty anywhere, and my first question was was what happens, and they call them uh, comfort uh, stops, comfort uh, breaks, yeah. and and you go behind a termite pile, and uh, <laughs> and you're just hoping that a lion isn't going to show up when you're sitting it's there. It's so funny because at the beginning I was being really precious about it. I was like, oh, I'll do, you know, I'll go quite a long way away from the truck, and I'll like, you know, find myself a little spot. By the end of it, I was like, oh, I'm just being here. Like, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> <like, laughs> you're out behind for the hours. Yeah. Playing music on my phone, yeah. You should not play music out there. What are you, <laughs> what are you talking it's about? It's to come with the noise yeah. and, you know, I understand. people hearing I understand. All right. what's going on. So, so you're, you're sharing this experience of uh, Beauty and the Beast with fans. What are you doing? Yeah, so I started this Instagram account um, called The Press Tour. And so you can follow The Press Tour. So we started in Paris and it kind of like, you know, covers the journey. We went to London, just been to China, we're doing LA and then moving on to New York. And um, it kind of like chronicles this crazy challenge I set myself, um, which was to try to do the whole of my, you know, my outfits for the tour as sort of like sustainably and ethically as I kind of possibly could. Um, It's been crazy, it's been crazy. Is that sustainable? What is that? Yes. So it's that made out um, of? This is all organic silk. Um, it was made um, from the two new designers at Oscar de la Renta, um, Fernando and Laura. Um, these are Burberry organic silk. And this is gonna sound really earnest and kind of ridiculous, but I, I actually just found out today that these earrings are from a brand called Article 22, and they're made from upcycled bombs that were collected from the Vietnam War shrapnel and then converted into jewelry, wow. into earrings. Yeah, I just found this out and it's like, it's such a lovely idea to turn something so negative into something beautiful. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's very, very cool. Yeah. Oh, well, good for you. Well, you know. Now I want uh, to buy, <laughs> you want I'm, I'm gonna buy Porsche some grenade earrings. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Um, <laughs> do you remember, like, how old were you, you when the first Harry Potter came out when you went to that premiere? Oh my God. Um, 10 or 11, 10? Do you remember 11. what you wore? Oh no. Do you wanna see? <laughs> I don't know if I do. Oh, wow. Do you remember this wearing was, that? This was special. You know what I do? Because I, you know, this was my first ever movie premiere and my mom and I planned this for weeks. It doesn't look like it, but there was a lot of thought that went into this. Um, I thought I looked amazing, by the way. Well, like, uh, I bet you did then. It's, yeah. you know, it's just uh, looking at it now. It, yeah. It, Bless me. But I bet you looked fantastic then. (laughs) 
So uh, did you, was this a role to take on that you wanted to do, like watching Beauty and the Beast? Did, did you think, I want to play that character? Oh my God. If you had told me when I was five, which is probably around the age that I was watching it on repeat, that I would one day get to be Belle, or I get to play Belle from Beauty and the Beast, I would, I mean, I, I don't know what I would have done. A, I wouldn't have believed you, and B, I would have freaked out. Like, I, I mean, I watched it so many times I made my parents crazy. Like, that's, so many times. That's what kids do. That's what you do with those movies. Yeah. But um, you took it, and I think you did some really cool things with it because you sort of uh, changed her to be a little stronger. Yeah, I think it was very important to me that she be very active and that she be very um, in control of her own destiny. And, uh, yeah, I wanted her to, to, be, to be powerful, yeah. which, I mean, she already was, to be honest. And that's a great role for you to play. It yeah. really is. All right, Beauty and the Beast opens in theaters and IMAX everywhere on March 17th. When we come back, Emma is going to do one of our IFBs where she has something in her ear. I'm going to tell her what to say. And she can't say anything except for what I tell her to say. And she's going to hire a nanny. We'll be back. <laughs> All right, we have set up hidden cameras in just a few moments. Emma Watson is going to interview a nanny, but the nanny isn't for her kids because she doesn't have any kids. The nanny is for her. <laughs> Emma, can you hear what I'm saying? Yes, I can hear what you're saying. Wonderful. OK, so our nanny is uh, walking close to the door. Open the door and go, yoo-hoo, I'm ready for you. <laughs> yoo-hoo, I'm ready for you. Please come in, sit wherever you want. Please come you? in, sit wherever you want. OK, thank you so much. Oh, interesting choice. Oh. Interesting choice. Oh, where do you want me to No, 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 that's fine. No, no, that's, that's fine. Oh, okay. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Are you? you know, I assume someone told you about the position. I assume someone told you about this position? Yes. Okay, so I'm looking for nanny. Okay, yeah. okay so I'm looking for a nanny. Okay. But here's the thing. Oh, okay. I but think. here's the thing. Okay. You'd be my nanny. You'd be my, my nanny. <laughs> I, I, got, I got the idea. I was watching The Bachelor. I got the idea. I was watching The Bachelor. You... Oh, my gosh. Corinne? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was so hilarious. Yes. And I was like, that's so awesome. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Yeah. That's what I thought, too. Yeah. yeah. I, like, yeah. I started saying Vagine, too. Like, I started so saying Vagine, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> tell, me about, tell me a tiny bit about yourself. Tell me a tiny bit about yourself. OK, well, I've been, uh, I lived in Texas before. And then I moved right, here cut, when cut I was her off. I got Wait, it. Um, I got it. I got it. Yeah, I got it. Okay. okay. Um, so are you good at making <laughs> lunches? Like the kids I've like taken care of, they were for a long time yep, but, now, so I love yes. it. Back to yep. me. Yep. Back Sorry, to back me. Back to me. Okay. <laughs> so I'm very particular. I'm very particular. I don't like crusts on sandwiches. Uh, I don't like crusts on sandwiches. I don't like okay. milk, but I like Red Bull. I don't like milk, but I like Red Bull. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I like to go potty alone. I like to go potty alone. Okay. <laughs> I don't need you to help me potty. I don't need you to help me potty. But I want us to be like family. <laughs> but I want us to be like family. Uh-huh. And the family that laughs together stays together. And the family that laughs together stays together. Start yeah. laughing. Start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep laughing. Keep laughing. Keep going. Keep laughing. Keep going. Keep laughing. Keep laughing. Get, get crazy with the laughter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just stop and stare. Now just stop oh and stare. <laughs> I want to be able to trust you with my secrets. I want to be able to trust you with my secrets. So, so I'm going to tell you something right so now. I'm going to tell you something right now. I've never told anyone. That I've never told anyone. Okay. <laughs> like, what like? Now just start crying. <laughs> my finger hurts. Okay. My, just, my finger really hurts. It's, it's an owie. It's an, it's an owie. <laughs> Hold your finger out. Make it better. Can you make it better? Yeah. I should, I should love it. <laughs> I don't know what to do. See, owie, I don't see it. See, that was a test. You did very well. Oh my God. That was a test you did. I was like, I don't see it. Okay. Now, hold on, what time is it? Hold on, what time is it? 4.27. It's snack time. It's snack time. Snack time? Open up the cabinet. A treat? Go into the cabinet. One of these. There's a lollipop in there. Something? It's under the coffee pot. Wow! All right. All right, good. <laughs> Take a lick some of it. What? Offer it to her. 
Uh, no, thank you. I don't eat candy. I don't eat candy. Hey, I just remembered I need to I text was, someone. When I was, hey, I just remember that I need to text someone. Oh, your phone's over here. Do you want me to get out of for you? Act like you're looking at a text and go, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. no. Throw the phone, throw the phone, no. No! <laughs> and just look in the mirror and say, mirror, mirror on the wall. Mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the best little girl of them all? Who's the best little girl of them all? You are, Emma, you are. You are, Emma. Yeah. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one more thing I think you should know. There's one more thing I think you should know. I'm not looking for a nanny. I'm not looking for a nanny. You're okay. on. I was like, is this a joke or it, not? Yes, you're on the Ellen show oh right now. God. You're on the Ellen show. Oh my gosh. <laughs>